Congressman Ron Paul has brushed off a last place showing in South Carolina and vowed to keep fighting to get delegates. The Texas congressman joins me from his home state of Texas. Congressman, thank you for joining me. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Good, Mike. Thank uh, you. Well, you know, you've had a pretty remarkable turn since four years ago, and I've got a graphic. I'm going to put it up on the screen. It shows that the difference between 2008-2012 is dramatic. In Iowa, you went from just under 10% to over 21%. New Hampshire, from 7.5% to 23%. And in South Carolina, uh, where you had like 3.5% up to 13%. Congressman, it's obvious that something is clicking with voters more so this time than four years ago. Tell me, what is it that you're saying that's causing them to pay a whole lot more attention to you? Well, I think you know me well enough that my message and my speeches haven't changed too much. My answers are the same. But I think the country has changed, and I think people are much more concerned about the issues I've been talking about. Take, for instance, the issue of monetary policy and the business cycle. It sounds esoteric, but the young people who are very interested in what I'm doing are very fascinated with this. Also, I, I think people are coming around to thinking that how long should we stay overseas? Uh, you know, is it a wise thing to be constantly in these wars and we don't know when they're going to end? And Obama has expanding this without much consultation with the Congress. And I think people are starting to listen to this. But I think the most dramatic thing was the downturn in the economy, because I had talked about the housing bubble and the problems that we faced. But the downturn in 07 and 08 was a dramatic difference. And I think that's when uh, this message became more appropriate and more people started to listen. You have talked a lot about our military engagement overseas. Uh, you'd like to cut the military uh, dramatically. The Defense Department budget, as you distinguish between the actual uh, fighting force of the military, but still a huge cut in the Defense Department. Yet, amazingly, you have a substantial amount of support from the military, both veterans and active military. And, and you've not just said that, but we've done a little fact checking and PolitiFact verifies that you have extraordinary support from the military. What do they tell you? Why are they supporting you? Because it would, it would seem that that's sort of uh, almost not expected for that to happen. Well, they're on the front lines, and they've been over there two and three and four times, and I don't think they're seeing the results that we're told that's happening over there. And they also know that I've served five years in the military during the 60s, and those were rough times in the 60s because the wars were being escalated and the Vietnam War didn't end well. You know, it ended badly, and we lost a lot of lives. And actually, we ushered in uh, the 1970s, which was the stagflation, a lot of inflation and huge debts. And I think this is the same thing happening now. We're seeing this as a big economic burden. Uh, the, due to this overseas spending and the wars, it added $4 trillion onto our national debt. I think the young people and the military people know that uh, they don't see an end in sight. Uh, so I think this is why they're, they're very interested. But I don't think this should be ignored. The people who have to do the fighting keep going back again. You'd be surprised at how many messages I get from the families and the wives and the, and the people, the veterans who have come back. And they know that, you know, I really care about this. And they sort of accept my idea that, well, why don't we just go to war more rarely and go only under proper conditions, and that is let Congress make the declaration and uh, make sure that we know we should do it and then go fight them and win the wars and come home like we did in World War II. And we've slipped into this, this sloppy way of uh, getting engaged overseas. And I think uh, the people who are on the line understand this and they think a cautious approach is probably a good idea. Congressman, at the risk of being uh, impolite, you are the oldest candidate in this race and yet you have the strongest support from younger voters. Tell me why. Well, it, it's a very good question. But I, I think they have challenged this paradigm of right and left. Uh, you know, that we, we uh, have Republicans and Democrats, right and left. But I think if, if they look at what's happening, nothing really seems to change. And I think they're convinced, as I've been convinced, and what I talk about a lot, is it's not a struggle really between the leadership of two parties philosophically, even though the rhetoric is different, I recognize that. But I think the difference is 
what what people see is it's a struggle over power. They're, they're insiders against our insiders. And then when they see, you know, both Republicans and Democrats bailing out the wealthy, you know, like uh, Republicans and Democrats did in 07 and 08, uh, they see this completely differently. And, and, and they see me as more being more independent and presenting the case that uh, there's, another, there's another issue and we should be coming together maybe with a strict adherence to the constitutional and an emphasis on personal liberty as well as economic liberty. And I, I think they find that a rather attractive approach. All right, Congressman, as you move into Florida, uh, who do you target? Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich, Rick Santorum? Who are your sights set on that you've got to convince the voters of Florida you're a better candidate? See, from my viewpoint, Mike, is, is I, can't, I can't separate the three of them because I think they, they represent so much of what I consider the status quo because they're not challenging the, the foreign policy. I believe we can have a strong national defense, a pro-American foreign policy, without injuring, uh, you know, our, our defenses whatsoever, but changing it. Monetary policy, that's been my big issue for, you know, 30 years, trying to prevent the bubbles from forming, and therefore the deficits, too. I, I have sort of a monopoly on that in this campaign, because I've offered, my offer is to cut a trillion dollars out of the budget. And the other candidates talk about cutting the proposed increases. Everybody in Washington talking about cuts, but they're not really talking about cuts. They're talking about a kind of a trillion dollars over 10 years, a hundred billion dollars a year. Well, we're going yes. to have to go, unfortunately, but I appreciate very much your being here. Good luck in Florida. I know it's a, a tough and big state, and I thank you so much for coming tonight and uh, talking to us. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's been a pleasure.